That morning, it, I remember driving into work that morning, it was just a crystal clear day. Um, I was actually on the hostage rescue team at the time, but I went up there on a temporary assignment and somebody came up to me and said a, a helicopter hit the World Trade Center. And I thought, man, that's crazy. And so we turned the TV on and we started watching it. As I was watching the television, watching the monitor up on the, up on the wall, you saw the second plane hit. And I had picked up the phone to call my brother, who was at the Washington field office. He was, you know, four blocks away. Um, and I, it was harder than hell to get through to anybody because the phone lines were just all tied up. They confirmed that, yeah, it was an attack. And he was on the evidence response team. And so he, um, he was telling me that he was on his way up to New York. He was going to go home. He had to drive back down to Stafford, where we both lived and he was going to pick up his bags and he was then drive up to New York. Um, and he, so he started crossing the bridge. I mean, he got it, all this stuff together and started crossing the bridge. He, he calls me back and he says, well, I guess I'm not going to, to uh, New York because a plane just hit the Pentagon. All hell broke loose. I mean, he hung up and he went over there and I think he immediately started trying to figure out what was going on. It was, I mean, it was basically a you know, chaos over at the Pentagon. At headquarters, they had assembled everybody into a room called SIOC. It's the Strategic Information Operations Center. It's kind of like the brain hub. Of, you know, it's got all the monitors, and we were tied into NORAD and uh, NORTHCOM and all these other entities, and um, we were trying to figure out what the hell was going on and trying to figure out where this other plane was because they had said that um, it was coming back to hit the Capitol. There was, you know, they said it's coming to hit the Capitol, it's coming to hit the White House, and it's, you know, FBI headquarters may be a target. And I kind of thought to myself, FBI headquarters is kind of in the middle of D.C. It's on Pennsylvania Avenue between 9th and 10th. And so it's kind of surrounded by a lot of buildings. And I, th I think we're about 12 stories high, and all the buildings around us are about 12 stories high. So in order for them to hit the FBI building, they would have to kind of go, uh, uh, uh. I mean, it would, it would, be, quite a, it would be quite the aeronautical feat. Um, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Um, but they still hadn't had the plane. And then while we were, while I was sitting in there, at, uh, we were listening to NORAD communicate, uh, tell us where this other plane was. I think it was Flight 93 that went down in, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And so they had the plane on their radar and they were following it. And I think some, they scrambled some F-16s to go intercept the plane. I think they determined that there was a struggle on the plane and that, that it started taking a nosedive into the earth. So yeah, it was a pretty crazy day. And they had grounded all air traffic. And there was one airplane that was flying and the hostage rescue team was out in, in I believe they're in San Francisco or out in California here somewhere training. And United got a plane and flew them back, and they were the only airplane in the sky over the U.S.